guest, the president of EEP, will be able to read through the comments as well as your questions that you might pose to President Chilufia Tayari. Like you've put it, that um, you are tormented. Kindly share with us the recent arrest, detention, court appearance, and finally the release. What was the mood? How was your experience um, when you spent eight days away from home, away from your family in custody? How was your experience? Um, my brother, it was really bad. Um, I must say that uh, this is not the first time that uh, I have spent uh, days in cells. But uh, of all the times that I have uh, been in the cells, I think this was the worst experience that I've ever had. Not because I was, uh, not because, uh, you know, the police officers or the inmates were bad. It was, it is the worst experience because I strongly believe that I didn't deserve to be in the cells. That's the first thing. I don't believe that I did anything that uh, warranted me to be in the cells. What I said is the truth. And even those that put me in the cells know that I said the truth. The second part why I feel it was the worst moment is that whilst I feel that I didn't do anything wrong, and indeed I didn't do anything wrong, I was incarcerated by people that to me I consider very close friends, very, very close friends, brothers and sisters, as we usually call each other. In the text messages, in the conversations that we usually have with a number of the PF um, leadership, you know, we address ourselves, my brother, Munina, my sister. I just never thought this would come from my brothers and sisters in PF. That they would, you know, they just didn't incarcerate me, they were actually fighting to keep me there. They were actually fighting to torment me. The police cells were not that bad, but they, their actions were so bad that they were really pushing it. Number one, they clearly made it a point that they wanted me to be in there longer than, 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 than I would want, than, than anybody would, would imagine. They had no intention. I'm out here not because the PF made a decision that let's release Shirufatayari because he has been there for long. No. They still wanted me inside. And then it was not enough for them, for me to be just inside. They still wanted to do other things to extend my pain. Like, for example, why would, why would uh, a, a Facebook post defaming the president extend to searching my house? extend to searching my house, my office. They, I mean, and my friend, they, they turned upside down my house. I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. Their warrant said they were looking for documents, uh, computers and other computer devices. They picked computers. They picked a phone of poor maid in my house who looks after our baby 
because when we were walking into the house, I said, I shouted to say, can you take the baby outside? Because I didn't want the baby to see me. You know, the baby had not seen me for some days. And I'm sure if Kia had seen me, she would have been excited. And then to be seen surrounded by these police officers and to be taken away, I said, take the baby outside. She left the phone inside. They picked that phone up to now. It's not there. When you say they wanted to keep you for more days, President Ayari, we have seen people that have complained in this country that they have been kept for long. For example, I know that the issue is in court. Former Minister Sejani and four others spent about 31 days. Uh, the president of RPP spent more than 15 days. Why is it that you expected your detention not to be longer when we have people that have been in cells for more than 48 days, more than 48 hours, brother? To start with, I have never subscribed to keeping people longer than necessary in the cells because actually cells are not places where people should stay longer. Unfortunately, this is happening. It's so rampant. Each time, you know, you go into the cells, you find so many people that are there longer uh, than, they, than they are supposed to be because they are actually holding cells. It is just momentarily uh, that you are there, you are either taken to court and you are given bail or you are given bond. So I, for one, am um, against this uh, tendency that seems to be becoming normal in this country. It is becoming normal in this country that people can stay in cells longer than they are supposed to, longer than the law prescribes. Mm -hmm. And yes, you are right. I can sit here and complain. But the poor people, my friend, a lot of them are there. I know even yesterday, because when I left, Yesterday, I still went to, my, to the cell, uh, you know, to see the, 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 the young men that I left there. There are people who are in the cells for more than a month. And yes, you are right. You have uh, spoken about uh, Sejani and uh, Chikuse, I yes. yes, Leslie Chikuse. And of course, other people have been there longer than that. Mm. But uh, that shouldn't be the case. That shouldn't be the case. For anyone, it shouldn't be the case. It's wrong. And the, it is a pity that this is happening under the leadership of one who is a lawyer. Because President Edgar Chagwalungu is a lawyer. And a renowned lawyer for that matter, a senior lawyer for that matter. So these things should not be happening. And for me, why for me I feel so bad? It's the point that I've already spoken about. These are my friends. These are people who, I mean, let's just face it. I mean, when you know somebody, in my language, they say, a ghost that knows you will not eat you and finish you. It will eat you but leave you a little bit. Now, this is not the case. Ichichuwa chanjikete. It wanted to completely eliminate me as if I never existed. Now that you've mentioned of Ichiwa, Friday night, you recounted that um, Siawan warned you that Chief Yatayari, why are you allowing the Patriotic Front to use you? They'll use you and dump you like paper. Yes. And you said... Now you believe that maybe that is one of the prophecies that Siawan has predicted and has come to pass. Where are you getting this conviction to say, indeed, your Chiwa has used you and wanted to finish you? It is very clear. This experience, what did I do? I didn't you do anything. You the president. I didn't defend the president. And of course, I will not uh, uh, discuss that mm. further yes. other than saying what I pleaded, mm. that I didn't. Because a plea, a, 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 a not guilty plea, 
denying the charge was entered. So I'll go as far as that. Mm. But uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's imagine. Okay. Let's now. Let's just take it to say. These are my friends, and if indeed I did something wrong, if indeed, let's imagine I did even something wrong, mm. as friends, I would have expected them to call me and talk to me. I am one of the persons that is so readily available for the PF, readily available. They call me at any time. I have been woken up in the middle of the night, at dawn, 03, 02, I have traversed this country in the night where there is something that has to be done. And they're like, you know what? This before dawn, this has to be done. Or you have to be in another town. I have picked up a vehicle. And most of the times, I don't even move with a driver or anything. I have driven all night without sleeping reach another town and come back, you know, as if I never even went anywhere. And with this kind of relationship that I have with these people, surely, surely I thought I would be treated better. But I was wrong. I was wrong. And yes, when Sia Wan said that, because I do actually listen to Sia Wan. And I mean, anyway, I'm a person that I don't just talk. I talk, but I also listen to others. So when you are having your interviews here, I also follow the interviews of other people. When other people go live, I also follow, you know, um, you know whatever the discussions. Your breakfast, early in the morning, whenever you, you come up, I mean, it pops up on my phone, and I, I watch. So I, I watched the one, and I was thinking to say, I mean, this crazy guy is just talking you know, he's just talking anyhow. Mm. This can't happen. These are my friends. I was, I mean, I'm sorry to say, but I was ready to do anything for President Edgar Lungo. I even put my, my life there to say, you know, Edgar Lungo has to come back, you know, and, and everything. I mean, that is the kind of person I used to take myself like, you know, a true de a defender, a staunch defender of President Ed Galungu. But I can't think of any other person who would have the powers to command those police officers to treat me in the manner they did. I can't think of any, any other person apart from the head of state. I can't think of any other person because, you know, even with the police, when they, are, when they come to arrest you, or even when they're arresting a, a, a poor person, they have a conscience. Our police are very good, actually. They have a conscience. They are human beings. They are good. But there are times when they are told to say, treat that one accordingly. And you see them, you know, swing into action like nobody. They don't laugh. People that you know, people that even salute for you. You know, because for me, I'm, so I'm, I'm taken like a government official. So you find that sometimes the police officers, they even salute for me. But those very police officers, they were so hard on me because somebody, somebody with powers, big powers, told them to fix Chilifatayari. That was very sad. Again on Friday, you, you said you are disappointed with... Um the past minister in charge of home affairs, Stephen Campiongo. What is it that you wanted Stephen Campiongo, Honorable, to do for you? What is it that you were, you were expecting from him? I have so much respect for Honorable Campiongo. And um, I really hold him in high esteem as a minister of home affairs. Up to now. You're still holding him in high esteem. I do. Thank you. I do. And um, I give that answer with, you know, a little bit of a thought and giving a benefit of doubt on him. Though I can clearly say that uh, uh, he's a brother 
but uh, I don't know which word I can use uh, in English. In my, where I come from, we would say nicha mwenso, ali kwato mwenso. You know, I don't know if I, 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 am I allowed to use coward, you know? Um, he was scared, if I could put it that way. Scared of what? Scared of who? Scared of the president. Scared of state house. Are you saying your incarceration was a directive from state house? It For can, you to say uh, you were scared of state house, it can never be. It can never be. It can never be an instruction from anywhere else apart from state house. And, uh, you know, I was actually, I actually I had a conversation with somebody uh, during the day. And this, this person was trying to sort of like mediate. Uh, I don't know who she was trying to, who had spoken to her. And she was trying to be bureaucratic. And I told this person, I said, you know, you are talking to a person that is part of the system. I may not be on government payroll, but I walk in the corridors of power. I know who is who. I can tell when something happened in the country. I can tell at which level the operation or the command is coming from. So this one, this one could not have even come from Kampiongo. It was not Kampiongo. It was not Kampiongo because... I know how Kampiongo operates. Kampiongo, a number of times people think that he is that ruthless minister who just orders the police to do this and that. No. I worked with Kampiongo, I can assure you. What can make the president to issue instructions to finish off somebody who has been defending the president, who has been woken up in the middle of the night, sent on a mission, ready to do anything and defend the president and make sure that President Ed Galungu is retained. Why should President Ed Galungu think of finishing this defender who is part of the system? President Ed Galungu has got one weakness, among others. He has got one weakness, and this weakness that he has is insecurity. And he believes what people around him tell him. The people around him tell him, particularly his political advisor. And uh, he believes easily when they say something. And the weakness that is there is that uh, he doesn't have the courage to face people. I have... Um, I have met a number of PF members, senior members, who have had issues with, uh, uh, you know, the president. And a lot of them, what they complain about is that Vakateka has not spoken to me. I wish Vakateka could speak to me. And once he hears something and he puts you on the left side, he even completely, you know, alienates you. He ostracizes you. He cuts you off. That it is difficult. There are even ministers. There are ministers. You know, people think that, you know, President Ed Galungu is easy to see. No. There are actually ministers that find it difficult to see President Ed Galungu. Yes, they would go to cabinet. They would go to state house. But it doesn't mean that they meet President Ed Galungu. President Ed Galungu meets who he wants to meet. He's available to who he wants to be available to. But those that he puts on the left side, it doesn't matter at which level you are. He would actually frustrate you. He's a silent killer. He's a silent tormentor. So you, you would be there and he would be tormenting you. You've talked about the president having this weakness of insecurity. Are you saying the president is scared of you? The president is not scared of me, hmm. but President Ed Galungu has become so obsessed for power. And the, anything, it doesn't really mean that you, I, I know President Ed Galungu knows that, I mean, 
I, I cannot win an election. Yes, there was this elect there is this election, and I was willing to con to contest. I know for me, uh, just contesting, not winning. No, I, and exactly, and I used to say that, mm. and I, we used to talk about these things, uh, even uh, among the, uh, the, 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 the 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 senior members of the party. Uh, and they agreed. That senior members of EEP or senior members of PF? Of, of PF, of mm. course. Of course, I mean, I do report to my political party and my members uh, know exactly what was going on. But the very fact that you sort of like, or is, whisp is told that this person is moving away from the agenda of singing President Edgar Chagualungu for 2021, the moment that is whispered in his ears, or the moment he feels that whatever you are doing threatens that, President Ed Galungu will not spare you. And I knew this because I have seen how others have been treated. Most of the people who have, fa who have faced the wrath of President Ed Galungu, it's mostly because somebody has whispered in the ears of President Ed Galungu that this person is after your position. But for me, I didn't want President Ed Galungu to lose election in 2021. But one thing that I, have, I kept on insisting to everybody is that when something is wrong, I will speak out. I said that. I kept on, even, even in State House, I have said it, I've never hidden that for me, when something is wrong, I will speak out. And even what they are terming as, de as defamation, it is something that I saw that it is wrong and I spoke out. But somebody said, brought that to President Ed Galungo, I'm sure, brought in a few other issues maybe, and that arsenal of, uh, you know, Amari was set on me to torment me and my family. What they wanted to achieve, most probably, is to keep me quiet. But that's not my nature. That's not Chirifatayali. I will die talking. I will not, I will not cower from talking. I will talk. Do you regret to have been a hard gun for the Patriotic Front? You've talked about meetings that we're having as a president of a political party, but attending meetings of a different political party. Do you regret of having been a hard gun of the PF and a defender to His Excellency the President? We need to put things in context. It's not so much attending meetings of, 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 uh, of PF. Mm. It's about the government. It's about the government. And look, we can be from different political parties, but we have to be patriotic. We have to be patriotic, and we have to defend the government. And we have to defend the institution of the presidency. It doesn't matter who is there. We have to defend that. And for me, I offered myself, I offered my service to defend the presidency. Of course, particularly in this case, President Edgar Lungu, because mm. I thought this man is a good man. And so I offered myself to defend President Edgar Lungu. I was not so much of a hired gun as you would put it mm. in the context of doing wrong things. No. I can run you through what I did. There is nothing that I did which was, which, which contravened my morals. Nothing. Nothing. Whatever I did, whatever I was involved in, it is because my moral conscience was clear that what I was doing is right. I was defending the presidency. I was defending my government. Mm. Yes, I was not a government official, but I was, if you like, a government operative helping President Edgar Chagua Lung. Do you regret? I don't. I don't regret. 
It is the, the share, the, 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 I don't know which word I can use, but the shame is on, is on those who abused me, who think that, you know, they, they, they could just abuse me and throw me like that. But for me, I still hold my head high that what I did for this country, what I did for President Ed Galungo, I still hold my head high. And I would do it again if I need to. For example, there are some of the things that I used to do is to check what is, what is being reported on President Ed Galungo. This I did every day. Early in the morning, I would wake up, I would scan all the news, I would you know, listen to all the news from this news to whatever, social media. I was always reading what they're saying about President Ed Galungo. And when I find something that, uh, you know, I feel this is putting the head of state in disrepute, if it is not true, I would immediately come in to defend President Ed Galungo and put things there, you know, in the right context or in the right perspective. That I did. And I would do that even, if, even for President Haka Inde Ichilema. If he, it happens that in the next elections he wins, I would still do that. But of course, you, ex you expect that, you know, when you do these kind of things, you expect your friends to, you know, reward you in a way. You know, because you need to eat at the end of the day. Mm. You need to buy bundles and so on and so forth. So that is work. After doing it, you have to be paid. Absolutely. And you were paid. I wish I was paid. I wish I was paid. I really wish I was paid. Not that I got nothing completely. No. Mm. Time and again, you know, one would give you like a five pin. The most you would get is ten pin. But that ten pin would come after a long time and when you are really desperate and you are busy calling somebody, please, 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 nafwe nsalakuno, nafwe nsalakuno. And maybe somebody will throw that. That was not respectful. And I did actually put these complaints to the authorities, including President Ed Galungu, to say, look. Mule mforesha kubwangu. Ah, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> well, not that Mulem Foresha Kowangu, but mm. when you say Mulem Foresha Kowangu, it is, it is not a fixed. Mm. You are not on a salary. Mm. You are not on a salary. But you are doing something. Mm. You are helping out. And when you are helping out, you expect your friends to help you as well. But, and when they are not helping you, you can also complain to say, guys, Mulem Dole Kesha Kowangu, Mdanguru Kakona Inatiria Munga Mulefo, Nalina Mwan Mdanguru Kakona Mpela Kwa Something. Not can of enami papa, tanami papa, that's when you give something. So I want I like to be transparent. Yes, I helped President Ed Galungu. Yes, once in a while I would get something. But it was not like what many people think that you know uh Teali is bankrolled by the PF and so on. No, no, no. Uh, my budget I sustain it. I sustain my budget. I look after my family using my businesses that I do. Of course, I must say that, I mean, some of the businesses, I get them also through the connections that, that I have with the PF. So, so, so somehow, even if you're not getting paid, you, the consolation that you get is that, okay, even if these guys, they are not giving you direct, but at least you are getting some business mm -hmm. because of the connections that you, that you have with them. So mostly, if there is a benefit that I got is the business that I got because, you know, I'm able to say, hey, boss, uh, I mean, this person is complaining. I run a consultancy company. And mostly the money that I make is helping people to, uh, you know, push for their payment, helping people to put up documents, the tender documents. This is what I do. And I charge on percentages. Mostly that is the kind of, that is the money that I get. But the business, this business was really helped mostly by my connections with the people in government. You talked about having a meeting also on Friday. You had a meeting, not on Friday, but before you were incarcerated, you had a meeting with a special assistant to the president. Yes. For, uh, in charge of politics. Yes. Chris Zuman is Yes. In. What was the agenda? Look, president, um, like I said that I have been defending President Edgar Lungu, the institution of the presidency. 
and uh, mostly because I'm, I'm in politics and mostly I'm looking at we are looking at politics mm. so mostly the office that I've been dealing with is the political office which is Chris Zuma Zimba who is in there if before it was it was Kaiza Zulu mm. now Chris is there so I've been dealing with the uh, Kaiza Zulu and mostly my nature of meetings most of the times is to clarify to say there is this I mean what is the situation uh, can you try to ask the president, you know? So, mostly it is about making verification or sometimes to say, oh, look, there is this issue. Can, can we see how we can, we can handle it? So, I used to meet uh, Chris uh, quite, quite often. But you are asking about my last meeting. Mm. The last meeting that I had, basically we were discussing the elections because... Um, I was, I, I wanted to stand. I really wanted to stand in this election. Mm. So the agenda was really to discuss how, how can I participate in this election whilst supporting President Ed Galungu. And this is, this is the negotiations that has been going on. Which position should I take? Which position should I take? And my desire was to contest as president so that I can learn the ropes. You know, it's a procedure for you to appear on a ballot. There is a procedure that uh, uh, precedes the elections. And I learned my lessons during where, you know, when I wanted to stand as mayor. Mm. You know, how I was cut out. And I know that 2026 I will win uh, the presidency. So I don't, I didn't want to, I wanted to learn the ropes now. So I was telling Chris to say, I want to contest as president. I want to learn. But along that, I will see how I can be helping President Edgar Lungu to make sure that he retains power. Can we safely say you had a meeting with Chris? You had intentions of standing as a president. Yes. Will I be wrong? If I say you wanted to contest or to stand as a president so that you split votes? I didn't want to split votes, but of course that was a concern that was brought. That was a concern that was brought that um, I might split votes. And, uh, you know, I tried to talk even with other people and they were saying, you know, look, much as you look simple or you are trying to look like so simple that uh, you know you will not get so much votes you have a, a following you have an influence and some people might actually just go for you and they were telling me to say even if you get 50,000 votes that will be too much for you uh, for to you know and who are those who are telling you well you don't have to mention all sinners sometimes it's enough to say, uh, you know, this, the, the substance than, mm. than individuals. But yes, this concern came up. And um, I was not very comfortable because I was being pushed not to contest and instead uh, just campaign for President Ed Galungu and get appointed, get an appointment after. Get an appointment after. But I was not comfortable with an appointment. A presidential appointment. I want to. I want people, the people of Zambia, to know that I am. I have never sought for a presidential appointment. Why I have never sought for a presidential appointment? Because it completely takes away your freedom. You can't criticize when the president appoints you. How are you going to to point out wrong things when he has appointed you? He will just fire you. Mm. And I know that President Edgar Lungu is not, you know, is not uh, perfect. Once in a while, you would do something wrong, and I would want to express myself. But because I'm appointed, I would not be able to, uh, to criticize. So I was not comfortable with that. And somehow that meeting or that discussion stalled. And what hit me next was an arrest. You also talked about uh, people surrounding the president. Is, uh, and, 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 and President Galunga's got wrong people that are surrounding him. 
wrong yeah. people that are giving him rumors and President Edgar Lungu act on rumors. Yeah. Is Chris one of those surrounding the president and giving pre the president rumors and verified information? And is the chief presidential rumor monger. Chris Zumanzimba is the chief presidential rumor monger. And uh, it's a pity that uh, since he came in that office, and I'm saying this in all honesty, mm. since he came in that office, I think he has propelled di more division and hatred than bringing people closer to President Edgar Lungu. A number of people have been labeled, have been painted black. Where he gets that information, I don't know. But he gets that information and he will speak to you, he will tell you this, 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 this person, that, 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 that. Of course, you would give him respect by the fact that, you know, he's in that office and um, he's privileged to be receiving certain information. But when you go on the ground, like among so many people that Chris Zumanizimba pointed to say this one is doing this, this one is doing this, I've not come across one who actually was doing what Chris has been saying. And with what has happened to me, I strongly believe that a lot of lies have been fed to President Edgar Lungo. And he's believing this. He believes this. But is Chris the right man for that job, of a political advisor to the president? Now that is, according to you, is a chief Roma Monga. He's far below what I, would, uh, what I would expect of a presidential advisor. He's far below. And I don't want to, I, I'm not saying this because others would look at this like it's a personal issue. No, no, no. It's not. You know, it's not. Being a presidential advisor, the number one thing that one should have is boldness. You should be bored. You are an advisor. Mm. So as an advisor, sometimes you need to confront your boss. So boss, I, I think this is not like that or whatever. You need to be bored. Chris is not bored. He is not bored. He's too... I mean, he, he's, he's, he's... You need to be submissive, of course, and subservient to your, to your leader. That's for sure. But you need to be bored. You must have some courage. You know, but no, no, no. no. The man doesn't have it. The other thing is that politics, you need to understand politics itself. And understanding politics by the fact you can have a, a PhD in political science. Trust me, on the ground it's another, it's another issue. I always give example of Bowman. Bowman is of a humble educational background. But that guy knows politics. That guy knows politics. Chris Zumanizimba is highly academic and theoretic. But politics, my friend, when you are in that position, you need to be very, very practical. Very practical. Very prag uh, you have to be pragmatic. You have to be strategic. And, you have and all to, these things are missing in Chris. Not that he, all these things are missing. He has them up to a certain extent. He has them up to a certain extent. Uh, are you saying these things as you mean them, or one may just say, uh, President Ayada No, no, no. Um, with Chris. No, this is, my, this is my opinion after interacting with, with, uh, with a man. And I'm, I am warning myself that I'm just coming from the cells and I could be, I could be bitter. But if President Edgar Lungu, for example, is the one that is sitting here and he asked me to substantiate these things, I would give him the cases in point. Like to say, look, Vakateka, this is what happened and this is what we did. But look where it took us. And uh, for the, uh, but I can't do that now, but f I can give you an example mm. of just myself. Whatever happened, whatever happened, this was a wrong political move. A very wrong political move. Why? One, this is the person that she, who is so useful. I believe I'm useful. I believe I'm useful. 
So this is a person that is so useful. And even if he has done something wrong, on a political level, you'll be like, uh-uh, we need to handle this guy properly. That is number one. Number two, my friend, we are, at this, we are, we are in the season of politics. This is the high season of politics. And in the high season of politics, my friend, you don't create enemies. You just don't create enemies. You do everything in your powers to keep all the friends that you can get. Even your enemies, if you can have them, during the time of elections, you would have them. Are, are you trying to say, because you said you expected to be treated differently because you are useful, according to, 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 to your statement, are you trying to suggest that we should have some people that are going to be treated more equal, even if they have committed something wrong, but because they are useful, then this one, treat him different, but this one, I think, is it what you are, you are, you are trying to suggest? Not at all. Not at all. Not to say the law should be applied selectively. No, mm. I'm not implying that. But I'm talking about politics because we are discussing the office of a political advisor. Mm. And um, to be honest, in politics, like I'm saying, in politics, sometimes you have to cut corners for the sake of politics. This is a reality. We can come, and, we can come here and pretend before cameras. We can come here and pretend before cameras, but it is a reality. Mm. It is a reality that uh, uh, politics, I am one of the, those uh, people who, are, who holds a view that politics comes first before the law. I hold that view that politics comes first before the law. A lot of people would argue that and would not agree with me, but the reality is just that. Politics come before the law. Let's... Yeah, let me take you to something that you posted. Uh, uh, that, uh, that, that was on Friday. You said, because President Lungu was very humble and meek, God gave him power. But that he has changed. He has tested power and is obsessed with it. Worst of all, he is surrounded by cowards who can't face him and tell him that actually he is not even eligible for 2021 elections. Zambia was shocked to hear that EEP president, the person that has been defending President yes. Edgar Lungu, is saying now that we are in an election year, campaigns have started, then President Tayari comes to Zambians and tell them right in their faces that this man who is a president is not eligible to contest. And the people that are surrounding the president know the fact that President Edgar Lungu is not eligible, but they are cowards. Yes. I still hold to that statement. People, I want to, I will start, I will start from the top mm. by saying President Edgar Lungu is not eligible. He's not eligible. And uh, I know people out there who judge me to say, but you knew and so on and so forth and blah, blah, and blah, blah. I'm just from saying politics comes first before the law. President Edgar Lungu is not eligible to contest for this election. And uh, John Sangwa, if he goes to court, if he argues his case right, I don't see President Edgar Lungu on the ballot. If they, indeed the judges also will be courageous. And it's very simple. My explanation is very simple. I'm not even trying to be a legalistic, whatever, whatever. Uh -uh. The law of Abba is written for all of us. Mm. All of us. We need to understand the law. That law, you will not go to court and say, no, no, I didn't understand the law because I'm not a lawyer. Uh -uh. You need to read the law and understand it. And my simple understanding of the law in relation to President Edgar Lungu's eligibility, is that President Edgar Lungu became president in the last constitution. Lawyers will talk about amendment, whatever, number, whatever, whatever, whatever. But anyway, for us laymen, 
let me just say he came in a constitution that we we just amended and that constitution which we amended had the terms and conditions for a president it had the terms and conditions for the president mm. and the terms and conditions for the president were very simple is that you can only hold office twice and that twice it did it it did not go in details to say how many years and so uh, uh it didn't in as far as holding office it just said twice finish meaning be it you enter into office for two days you have held office once you have sworn you have been sworn in you are president you are declared the president then tomorrow something happen whether you resign or anything you cannot go back and say i didn't hold office because i was only there for two days uh -uh. that is that constitution which you are talking about the old constitution so the moment president edgar lungu was sworn in in that old constitution i think it was was it on the 15th january or something like that that day president edgar lungu held office the issue of a term, this issue that we are discussing, a term and whatever, whatever, that is in the new constitution. As far as the time that President Edgar Lungu entered, that's it. That's it. He held office. And there is no negotiations to say, no, no, he was there for two. Uh -uh. He held office kwasila. So that is supposed to be counted as done and dusted. It's it is one. a term. It's a term. Mm. It's one. If you want to put it as a term or whatever, it's done. There is no negotiations there. There is no three years. There. Forget it. The three years comes in in terms of benefits. Who should get the benefits? But in terms of holding office, it doesn't matter. You could be there one hour. You have held office. That's it. So, since we are already counting, so that term, we are already counting. Then he was elected. In, in, 2016. in 2016. We have counted two. Finish. Do you realize that you are talking about the person you are referring to is a qualified lawyer and he has got a team of lawyers. Yes. Past government chief whip. Yes. In charge of legal. Yes. His deputy. Yes. He is also a lawyer. Yes. And these people have said according to what we've read we cannot risk we know that President Ed Galungu is eligible. Two operative words. Obsession for power and cowardice. The president himself, he has tested power. President Ed Galungu is not the Ed Galungu that we had before he became president. I remember him very well on one of the public television. Really saying, me, I don't even want to become president. I'm not even, well, I can't manage it. I'm not interested. When Michael Chirufasata died, Guy Scott followed him and said, no, I need to grab this power in spite of you being the one who had been left to act. The president is gone. I'm supposed to be the president. He just gave it away and walked away. It's cutters that followed him in the street and brought him, ah, ah, wakateka, tamachiringo kupela, you know, those instruments of powers. He said, ah, no, he didn't, he was, he was, he was meek, he was humble. And I was one of those people who were at Kabwe. Because I've been with PF longer than people uh, would understand. Mm. I was there. When Tutuanguluwe declared him as president and he went and won that election. Which I consider as a full term. The moment he entered there, I saw Ingram State House, Abakalam Babandi, my father, Abapongo Shiva Edgar Lungu, Vanvera Kunzuna Kwa Power. He made sure that 2020, 2016, he won it. He has been in State House and he's enjoying. And now, it's at all cost I must be, I must retain power. Yes, he's a lawyer and he knows 
that he doesn't qualify. But he's obsessed with power. He wants it. That's why he's crushing everyone who seems to, you know, pose a little bit of a, a threat or a, a, you know, a question around that area. He knows. What about the people around him? The lawyers that you're talking about, including the PF members? I can tell you that a number of PF members, senior PF members, they know. They know. Not just lawyers, but senior PF members, they know. Do they have the guts to face President Ed Galungu? Who is that one? Who can say that? Who can face President Ed Galungu over that? Who can face President Ed Galungu over that? What President Ed Galungu says goes. People have stopped thinking, Mupiev, it's, how, it's what the president says. It's what the president says. This is Saturday's edition of um, the special assignment. And my guest is um, Economic and Equity Party, EEP leader, President Chilufia Tayari. You've encouraged State Council, John Sangwa, to continue with the path of petitioning uh, the, the, the nomination of President Edgar Lungu. And here you've said if he's going to argue his case properly, you don't see President Edgar Lungu on the ballot. Why can't you take up this challenge yourself and prepare documents so that you challenge this person who does not qualify? Because... Um you know, you're saying, you're saying um, if he argues well, I also added, mm. if the judges mm -hmm. would also be courageous, yes. because they also have to be courageous. Mm. <laughs> I know what happened in uh, 2016, and I, and, I, and I want to tell the bench. Which bench? <laughs> the bench that, uh, the constitutional that, rule, that was sitting in the presidential petition. I want to tell them that I know what happened in 2016. I know what happened in 2016. And this is why when I say if they will have the courage, it is out of, the exp out of what I know about 2016 mm. that I say that. So if they will be courageous, I don't think they will look at it any other way. Because let's put it this way, my brother. If, uh, for example, I employ you, eh? You say, today, you are a, a, a movie TV. I say, today, uh, uh, let's say I'm the manager of movie TV. And you are employed to say, today, you'll be, uh, uh, the year is your contract, and you will get, uh, get 30,000 kwacha at the end of the day. Mm. Eh? Today, tonight. Eh? Tonight, because you are interviewing Chirifa Tayari, your contract, you will get 30,000 kwacha. And you will not, uh, but you will still come back tomorrow for work in spite of you knocking off late. And you sign that contract because these are the terms and conditions that you, your job is giving. Mm. Then tomorrow, whilst you are working, you know, another person, because when I'm going out after this, I mean, somebody from PF might say, ah, even me, I want to appear because Chilifa Tayari said this, 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 this. I want to appear. And then they say, okay, so since you interviewed Tayari, we'll get another person to, to interview this person, just as I'm leaving. Mm. But this person will give him 50,000, and tomorrow he will not wake. Can you, who has a contract, which said, which clearly stipulated that you are going to get 30,000 kwacha at the end of the day, and tomorrow you come for work. And then this person who is going to interview, the next person, they say, no, we'll give him 50,000 kwacha, and tomorrow you will not work. Can you say, yeah, no, even me, I should get 50,000 kwacha, and tomorrow I should not come? You can't. Because the contract which you have signed at this point in time, this is what it is saying. The contract that President Edgar Lungu signed when he walked in, it is that of 2015, before the, the, yeah, the new one. Yes. That is the one that he, he, he signed on. So he cannot argue to say, no, 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 no. 
We have to look at the term. Did it, did I, uh, whatever, was it three months? No, it was 18 months. Ah, uh ah, -uh, your term doesn't say that. Your terms and conditions, when you are being employed, it does not talk about 18 months, three months. Uh -uh. It just says, once you are sworn in, kwasira. So those who are coming, the one who come tomorrow, is the one that who can enjoy those new facilities. So in other words, if by Nong, if President Ed Galungu, God forbid, I love him, mm. he dies. By Nong is the one that can start talking about the term. To say, ah, uh ah, -uh. when I came in, it was only three months remaining. So I need, now there is a new constitution. But in the constitution that when President Ed Galungu ended, it doesn't. So in this simple understanding, and I, they, I don't think there is any other way we can look at it. Because the other way I would put it is this. Suppose, let's just imagine, suppose Sata came back, you know, he is dead. He died two years into whatever, you know. Suppose he came back. Would he come back and say, you know, I'm going to, I, I'm going to stand because I didn't finish? He can't. He held the term finish. You cannot apply the law. I don't want to sound technical retrospectively. Fiari pita, fiari pita. Va arabite, chiba wele to say, no, I saved the uh, one term. Ijamene monga, ijamene ninachita, ijamene nasiri zayamu anawasa, sina kwa nire. Eh? So I need another term, kutini sirize. He can't do that. Because that's what the law stipulated at that time. So clearly there is no two way about this. He doesn't qualify. He is not eligible. Now that you know, my question still stands. Why can't you take up this challenge of uh, petitioning uh, President Ed Galungu to say you don't qualify based on what you now understand? It's not easy to make a petition. I mean, first of all, I mean, to just to prepare a petition. It's not straight. You need a lawyer. You need a lawyer. I don't have the money to, uh, to do that. And then... Um, um, and then really, like I said, for me, I don't mind President Ed Galungu coming back. For me. Even if he doesn't qualify? It's the law. The law is made for people. The law is made for people, not people for, for the law. For example, I, had, I asked this myself this moral question. Suppose I have two people. Eh? This one is a bad guy. He's a bad guy, but he qualifies to... The law allows him to be president. This one is a good man. He's a good man, but the law doesn't allow him to be president. Should I go for a bad man just because he qualifies, he qualifies according to the law? No. According to my moral standing. You go for a good guy who doesn't qualify. I would rather go for a good guy. I would rather go for a good guy even if he doesn't qualify, even if the law doesn't, doesn't uh, allow him to stand. This is me. And this is the moral judgment, a moral decision I made. I asked myself, what are you going to do about this? You know Edgar Lungu doesn't qualify. What are you going to do? I looked at Edgar Lungu. Edgar Lungu is a good man. And I look around, I felt, I think, he is the best person. So why are you bringing up this debate or this discussion of President Ed Galungu not qualifying? Because according to you, President Ed Galungu is a good man. He's a good guy. Yes. And you want him to continue. You wish him to continue. Yes. Why are you bringing it out? What, what is it that you want people to know or to Very understand? Very good question. Obsession. He has, all of a sudden, he has become obsessed for power. If he was being as humble as he used to be, I would be very happy to let him continue. But he has become obsessed. He has become desperate. He's, he's showing desperation for power. And I'm wondering, what's going on here? Where is my good man, President Ed Galungu? Where is he? This is not the President Ed Galungu I have been vouching my life for. There is desperation here. And it is clearly signed by the way I was treated. If a, if a me, a person that he has been defending, can be treated like that, what about the Sejanis that you are talking about? What about all these others? And let's face it. Let's face it. Even Haka in the Hichilema, some of these issues that they have been throwing around 
uh, him they are clearly politically motivated and you know yes i've been one of those people that has been playing this no but for me i can tell you in everything that i participated i can tell you clearly why i participated for example the issue of the issue of uh, uh, the felunas mm. i would st i still stand because i strongly believe that poor people should not be deprived of their property and my participation in that is as far as just to make sure that those people get their land if indeed their land was stolen but politics has come to beset all that agenda when we started that agenda it was about the felunas getting their land helping poor people getting their land but unfortunately my friends have swung into it is all a political ploy now it is nothing about the felunas and that is why the felunas got lost slipped through the hands of the of the pf because for them they didn't care for the felunas so your fight was not uh, was not politically motivated. no it was for the felunas i was actually very disappointed when i heard that the felunas have disappeared i was very disappointed because it was agreed that these people will be helped to get the land but unfortunately they were taken for as political pawns and now even now as we speak those two people a mother and a father are still being looked at as political you know uh, uh, pawns which is very unfortunate it has now it is no longer about the land it's about the politics and that i don't agree and this i've said i've told the people that were in charge people that were in charge i've told them this is very wrong i've said it in no uncertain terms i've i said it this is wrong i know that time is not with us but uh, let me just squeeze in this question you pledge that you pursue the outgoing minister of education dr brian Shimba over the speed traps, scandal for the road and safety agency, RTSA, in which the minister benefited while at the Minister of Transport and Communication. Any response or further pursuing this? Now that is not a, a minister. said, I cannot touch him now because he's a minister. Now that is no longer a minister and he hasn't been readopted. Do you have plans of pursuing this or now it's the dead issue? I thank the PF for not adopting Brian Mshimba. And I was insisting, I was talking about this wherever I had an opportunity. And I want to thank all those that pledged that indeed they will not bring him back. Because he is one of those people that I strongly, uh, you know, spoke even to President Edgar Lungo. But of course, I want to, this one, I, I'm not faltering President Edgar Lungo. Uh, he looked at the time to say that we are already going into the elections. And um, it's useless. Let him just finish. And indeed, true to, true to what was discussed, uh, Brian Mushimba has been left out. Am I going to, to am I going to, to the, uh, you know, the anti-corruption and everything? Mm. Let me put my things together. Mostly, mostly the only thing that he, that that is keeping Bran Mushimba out. It's my source. My source, if my source will have the courage to stand in court, because you know, you, you can have the evidence, mm. but you need somebody to stand in court and say, yes, this is what exactly happened. If I am trying to convince my source, I've not spoken to him yet. If my source agrees to stand in court, Bran Mushimba, Bran Mushimba's days are numbered. Finally, Mr. President, you want to stand as a, uh, a mayor yes. of the greater city of Lusaka. What is it that you want to achieve? What is it? Why do you want to be mayor of the city of Lusaka? Well, um, first and foremost, it is um, a test ground for me because what I'm aspiring for is presidency. But to be given a smaller portion to manage, to lead, I think it will give me a good opportunity, a good experience. That is the first thing. So I'm appealing 
uh, to the Lusaka residents to give me that opportunity for me to manage at that level before I go to the higher level. That is the first thing. Now, what am I going to give to the, to the, to the, to the Lusaka residents? I am very clear in my mind and I'm very consistent on some of the things that I fight. The number one thing that I fight, my friend, is corruption, transparency. I can assure you that the moment Chirufatayali will enter into that civic center, Lusaka civic center, I can assure you that corruption will run like cockroaches out of the cupboards. I will fight corruption. There is so much corruption. There is corruption, for example, in the, uh, you know, the companies that are contracted to offer delivery, to, to, to offer some services to the residents of Lusaka, collecting garbage and, um, uh, you know, the, the markets, the bus stations and everything. I want to fight that corruption. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling everybody who is involved that one, the day that I get in there, I will fight corruption and I will bring transparency. I want the Lusaka people to know how much money does the council make mm. in a year? How much money does the council make? Where does this money go? I, they will know because they are the owners of the city council. Then number two, I want to bring in sanity. I want to bring in sanity. I want discipline. I am going to run with these cadres that are in the bus stations. I'm going to run with these cadres that are in the markets. I will restore the, you know, the ownership of the bus stations and the markets to the city council, to the people of Lusaka. This I will do. I will do and I will fight tooth and nail to make sure that all these properties get back into the hands of the people, the owners. Then number three, I want to make sure that we bring some development. It is a long haul, but we can do certain things. For example, when you talk about in the compounds, I mean, it's not a good environment under which many of our, of our Lusaka residents are living in. If you go in these compounds, the way people are living, it is, it is very bad. During the time of uh, you know, floods, when it is raining, look at what happens. There must be a solution to that. There must be a solution to that. They, they are not drinking good water in just Pachanyap. You know, uh, uh, Marapo, Marapodi. I mean, I went there, the water that they are, that they are drinking, it's just something else. So we need, to, we can change that. The other thing that I, I am looking at, it's equity. We need to create jobs. The city council is supposed to create jobs. City council is supposed to create jobs. But people are losing jobs. There is a lot that can be done, that needs to be done in Lusaka. And the, the city council can create employment. I am going to create employment. President Chirufia Tayari of the Economic and Equity Party, thank you so much for making an appearance on this special assignment and wishing you all the best as you stand as um, a, mayor, a mayor candidate in the city of Lusaka. Thank you very much. It has been a pleasure uh, to give me this opportunity, you know, to air out my views on some of these things that have been happening. And I pray that the people of Lusaka will give me an opportunity to be mayor just for this time, between now and 2026, and I'm sure they will be happy they voted for me. Mm. There you have it. This has been the special assignment on your channel of choice movie television today, Saturday, the 15th of May. My guest has been uh, Economic and Equity Party EEP President Chilufia Tayari. You've heard it for yourself. He has uh, touched many issues and he has responded to these issues. It's up to you to judge or to follow through these uh, revelations that uh, President Tayari has unveiled on tonight's uh, program. On behalf of Mavuto Piri, the producer and director of the program, as well as Cedric Sinconjera Jr., my name is Kelvin Dabola Chifoko. Good night. Thank you.
going to win the fight against the coronavirus. But to do that, we need to follow these basic prevention guidelines. It is important that you wash your hands regularly for 20 seconds with soap and water or alcohol-based hand rub. Cover your nose and mouth with a disposable tissue or flexed elbow when you cough or sneeze. Avoid close contact at least one meter or three feet with people who are unwell. Stay home and self-isolate from others in the household if you feel unwell. Don't touch your eyes, your nose or your mouth if your hands are not clean. Better still, maybe just don't touch your face at all. I know it could be difficult, but practice it. It's not impossible. This message is brought to you by Movie TV for the greater good of Mother Zambia. of change. Zambia's two most favorite foods, mango and guava, now available all year round. Californian mango and Californian guava, the delightful real fruit juices from the makers of Fruity. A quality product of Californian beverages. When they flip and roll and crawl away, putting on tape diapers can create gaps and leaks. That's when it's time for Pampers Pants its ultra-absorbent core has micro pearls that lock away wetness for up to 12 hours. And the stretchy waistband adapts to baby's body for a perfect leak lock fit. Try Easy On Pampers Pants, a comfy fit that helps prevent leaks. Presenting Mr. Money! Send cash and get cash right now from overseas. With international money transfer, it's just a breeze. Receive cash from across Africa at cool rates. And receive cash from other networks across states. You can cross borders at any time with your local Airtel line. So many deals with Airtel money. It's your time. Mr. Money, he knows it all, knows it all money. He knows it all. From Canada to Australia to Saudi Arabia, South Africa to America. Get cash in your area. Send and receive money from most countries in Africa with international money transfer. With our global money partners, transact conveniently across borders. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. Here is my good friend Joseph. This is his world. Here he is Zebige. He pays close attention to every corner, to every finish, to the top of each and every table.